The Tight Benny Program, presented by Lucky Strike. And now, your attention, please. And now, simply, yes, my consists and now the announced by we can say so and the consent blocks again. Words, promises, double talk. Phrases that add up to nothing. Yes, cigarette claims clutter the airwaves. But how many facts do you hear? Mighty few. But now, this smokescreen of double talk is swept away by facts for the first time in cigarette history. A month after month continuing quality comparison based on tests certified to be impartial, fair, and identical, proves by a wide margin Lucky Strike is the best made of the five principal brands of cigarettes. That's a fact. A fact verified by Foster D. Snell, Incorporated, leading laboratory consultants of New York City. They report, in our opinion, the properties measured are all important factors affecting the taste of cigarette smoke. We conclude that Lucky Strike is the best made of the five major brands. Yes, friends, Luckies are made better. So round, so firm, so fully packed, so free and easy on the draw, with no annoying loose ends. A big reason why Luckies taste better. But never forget, to get better taste, you must start with fine tobacco. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. There's no substitute for fine tobacco. Don't let anybody tell you different. And don't be misled by the smoke screen of cigarette claims. Choose your cigarette on facts. Smoke the cigarette that tops the five principal brands for quality. Enjoy fine, mild, good-tasting tobacco in the cigarette that's made better. The cigarette that tastes better. Lucky Strike. Try a carton today. Be happy, go lucky, go lucky, strike today. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Ladies and gentlemen, let's go out to Jack Benny's home in Beverly Hills. It's morning, and Rochester is running the bath. Oh, boys. Yes, Rochester. The tub is ready. Gee, I hope the water isn't too hot. Oh, no, it's just right. I tested it with my elbow. <laughs> Did you put in the lavender bath salts like I told you to? Oh, yes, a whole box. And also, two packages of that stuff that makes bubbles. Good, good. Come on, Polly, your bath is ready. <laughs> oh, for heaven's sakes, we go through this every time. Come on now, Polly, you've got to take your bath. <laughs> now, Daddy had Rochester put lavender bath salt in it. <laughs> and that stuff that makes millions of bubbles. Well, what do you say? Uh-uh. <laughs> well, that does it. Rochester, pick up the cage and bring it in the bathroom. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, quiet! <laughs> now, Polly... Look, set the cage up on the sink, Rochester. Yes, sir. Now, Polly, Daddy, you'll open the little door and you dive right in the top. <laughs> Polly, stop whimpering and dive already. <laughs> I can't understand it. I thought, sure, Polly was over her fear of water. Yeah, especially after all that money you spent taking it to the psychiatrist. It cost me a fortune. I took Polly to that psychiatrist's office every afternoon for two weeks. Maybe I shouldn't have stopped her treatment so soon. Well, why did you? I had to. Nothing looks sillier than a parrot lying on a couch. <laughs> now, look, Polly. Daddy isn't angry at you. He just wants you to... <laughs> get... <laughs> Quick, boss, open the cage. Polly wants to get into the tub. 
Well, what brought that about? I threw a rubber duck in the water. A rubber duck? <laughs> Polly, let her in quick, boss. Let her in quick before she finds out it's a decoy. Okay, Polly, okay. Here we go. You stay here and finish bathing Polly, Rochester. I'll get the door. When you say da 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 See, that song I wrote can't miss. Coming. Well, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, Dennis. Come on in. Mr. Benny, what took you so long to answer to the door? Oh, Rochester and I were bathing Polly. Gee, not in the bathtub again. Why not? Last time you gave Polly a bath, you pulled the plug, she went down the drain and came out at El Segundo. <laughs> Yeah, the psychiatrist said that's what gave her the fear of water. You know? <laughs> anyway, Dennis, I, I'm glad you dropped by because I want to get your opinion on something. Yeah, yeah, what, what, what? Well, I've been, I've been looking over my song this morning, and I thought I'd make a little change. I want it to be perfect. Your song? Yes, yeah, just listen to the change that I have in mind, and tell me what you think. Okay. Good. The music is right here on the... Hmm. What's the matter? My song, it isn't on the piano. Every time Rochester cleans in here, I can't find anything. Now, where's my song? Did you look in the garbage disposal? <laughs> Don't be funny. Are you sure your song was here this morning? I'm positive. I worked on it about an hour. I remember. It was just before I read the Sunday paper. Oh, Rochester! Yes, boss? Come here a minute. I can't find my song. Do you know where it is? No, sir. Well, think back. What did you do this morning? Well, I cooked breakfast, washed the dishes, cleaned the living room, and after you finished reading the Sunday paper, I put it back on Mr. Coleman's porch. <laughs> yes? Then I came back and helped you bathe Polly. Gee, I can't understand it. Well, I better go now. Now, wait a minute, Dennis. As long as you dropped in, let's hear the song you're going to do on the program. What's it going to be? Well, it's called Never, and it's from a picture I just finished at 20th Century Fox, produced by Georgie Jessel. Oh, what's the name of it? Golden Girl. Golden Girl, eh? And you're in it. Uh-huh. What part do you play? I don't know. I haven't seen the picture yet. <laughs> Janice, just sing, will you please? Oh, okay. <laughs>
good, Dennis. Excellent. In fact, your voice is getting better and better all the time. And you know, someday when you look at your paycheck, you may find a nice, substantial... Words, promises, double talk. <laughs> what? Dennis. What? What did you say? Oh, nothing. I swallowed my gum. Oh. Well, Dennis, the next time I... Oh, Rochester! Never mind. I'll get it in the den. Hello? Hello, Mr. Benny. This is Mr. Kiko. Oh, Mr. Mr. Kitzel, it's nice to hear from you. Thank you, Mr. Benny. The reason I called, I'd like to invite you to a Halloween party at my house. Oh, I'll be glad to come, Mr. Kitzel. Seems like you give a party every Halloween. Oh, yes. To me, this is a day of great sentiment. Ah. It was by a Halloween party that I first met my wife. Really? Yes, she came as a witch. <laughs> a witch? Yeah. Oh, a costume party. No. <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, you mean... Unfortunately, yes. <laughs> oh. Other girls have a dowry. She had a broom. <laughs> a broom? <laughs> Mr. Kitzel, you're joking. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, my. <laughs> well, thanks for inviting me, Mr. Kitzel. I'll see you Wednesday night. Good, but don't come too early. You see, as soon as it gets dark, I'm taking my little boy around the neighborhood to play trick or treat. Oh, that's cute. Why don't you bring him over here, too? No, thank you. To that rich neighborhood, I'll never let him go again. Why not? Last Halloween, he went to Beverly Hills, played trick or treat, and he got so much stuff, I couldn't pay the tax on it. <laughs> oh, well, all right. I'll be over at your house at 9 o'clock. Goodbye, Mr. Kitzel. Goodbye, Mr. Benny. Goodbye. <laughs> Dennis, Dennis, I was just talking to... Oh, hello, Phil. When'd you come in? Just a minute ago. Hey, Jackson, that wasn't Alice on the phone, was it? No. Look, if Alice calls, don't tell her you saw me. Why? Uh, well, what's the matter? I want to lay low and she cools off. <laughs> no kidding, Phil. Are you in trouble? Believe me, Jackson, if I didn't need the money, I wouldn't have done it. <laughs> Phil, what did you do? I played gin rummy with my kids and won 40 bucks. <laughs> You? You won $40 playing gin rummy with your children? What a couple of pigeons I'm raising. <laughs> oh, for a heaven's sakes. Phil, let me... Uh-oh. Hey, Jackson, if that's Alice, tell her I ain't yet been here no time today. <laughs> you ain't yet been here no time today? Yeah, yeah. Tell her, tell her. I will, Phil. I may phrase it differently, but I'll tell her. <laughs> Coming. Oh, hello, Jack. Hello, Don. Well, you've got the sportsman with you, too. Come on in, fellas. Oh, Jack, there's something I want to talk to you about. Well, if it's about Phil, he ain't yet been here. No time today. <laughs> you all. <laughs> now, what's that? I don't know. Words, words, double talk. What do you want, Don? Oh, Jack, you're going to love this. Now, you're just going to love it. The quartet wants to do a commercial to that song you wrote. So if you'll just give us a copy, the boys will show you what they have in mind. Oh, that's wonderful, Don, but this is a fine time for it to happen. Why? I lost my song. I can't find it anywhere. It's the only copy I've got. Dennis, are you looking for my song? No. Then what are you doing? I'm still trying to figure out what Phil said. <laughs> Forget it. Gee, Don, that is a shame. Oh, it certainly is, Jack. Well, if you haven't got the music, the boys will just have to do something else. I guess so. What else have they got? Well, uh, here's one I think you might like. Sing it, boys. Some men plow the open plain, some men sail the prime. But I'm in love with a pretty maid for work I have no time. Bread and wine. 
strikes, so we swam back to shore. Whoa, lucky, lucky strike, good old lucky strike, truly better tasting too. you know and they can work on it. Okay, Jack. See you later. Come on, fellas. How do you like that, Phil? The quartet wants to do my song and I can't find it. Why don't you forget about being a songwriter, Jackson? Ain't it enough that the Maybelline Company named you Blue Eyes of 1951? <laughs> what? That's what it said in this morning's paper. Today's paper? Well, this I have to... Oh, darn it. Rochester's already put the Sunday paper back on the Coleman's porch. Ronnie! Oh, Ronnie, where are you? I'm here in the den, Benita. Solitaire, huh? Yes, and I've almost got it beat, too. Well, you won't finish it. You said the same thing last night, and you were right. How did you know? The Queen of Spades is missing. <laughs> You'll find a new deck of cards in the... Uh, I beg your pardon, Mr. Coleman. Yes, Sherwood? I brought in the Sunday paper. Oh, thank you. Well, now, let's see what's new. Uh, aha, Benita, look at this. I was right. What? You wouldn't agree with me when I predicted both these things last week. Well, I was right all the time. Well, right about what? That Churchill would be elected and Dick Tracy would find Bonnie Bread. <laughs> uh, I wonder what, what's in, in the... Uh... Hello, what's this? What's what? The sheet of music just fell out of the paper. <laughs> oh, a sheet of music? Yes, yeah, so let, let me see. Hmm, it's a song by Jack Benny. Jack Benny wrote a song? So it seems. What's the name of it? When you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> oh, I say, now, really. <laughs> yes. Yes, I'm afraid, really. <laughs> listen, listen to this. Uh, when you say I beg your pardon, then I'll come back to you. When you ask me to forgive you, I'll return. Like the swallows at Serrano, return to Capistrano for you, my heart. Barney. With... Yes? I'm not sure I heard correctly. Was that like the swallows at Serrano, return to Capistrano? That's what he wrote. That's what the man wrote. He wrote that. <laughs> and, and then it goes... Uh, if you say that you are sorry, then I will understand. Neath the harvest moon, we'll pledge our love anew. Oh, Ronnie, you're joking. <laughs> Anita, I was never more serious or more nauseated in my life. <laughs> uh, listen, listen to the rest of it. So, my darling, though we've parted, come back to whence we started. When? <laughs> Yes, Jack, Jack has a footnote on the button saying, yes, whence it's the poetic form of where. <laughs> now, uh, j just let me finish this. So, my darling, though we've parted, come back to whence we started, and, sweetheart, then I'll come back to you. <laughs> this is the lousiest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> You have to use 
that kind of language. Well, what, what else can I say about it? Well, you still don't have to use that kind of language. You can say it's the most awful thing you ever heard. Well, darling, this is not the most awful thing I ever heard. It's the lousiest thing I ever heard. Imagine so, my darling, though we've parted, come back to whence we started. Oh, I wish he'd bring our lawnmower back from whence he got it. <laughs> well, that man has borrowed everything. The, the, the lawnmower, the ping-pong table, the garden hose, the vacuum cleaner. And the queen of spades. <laughs> oh, so that's where it went. Uh-huh. Benita, why in the name of Eli Calvertson would Benny borrow just one card? Well, it was missing from his deck, and he explained how. You see, he was doing a card trick. Benny Stave picked the Queen of Spades. Mr. Benny told him to put it where he couldn't see it. So Dennis ate it. <laughs> ah, Dennis Day. I, I have a great affection for that lad. I understand he drives Benny crazy. <laughs> about Jack. Oh, what's that? Well, with all the things he's taken from us through the years, not once has he tried to borrow any money. Well, darling, uh, money is the one thing he doesn't use. <laughs> he doesn't use it? But what does he do with his money? Well, he gets it, counts it, caresses it, and buries it. <laughs> Sometimes that Benny gets me so mad that... I beg your pardon, sir. Uh, yes, what is it, Sherwood? If I'm not intruding, I'd like to say something about Mr. Benny's borrowing. The floor is yours. With this subject, the more the merrier. Uh, well, do you remember in September when he gave that big party at his house and came over and borrowed me? <laughs> oh, yes, Sherwood. You never did tell us about that party. What happened? Well, it was a rather interesting experience, especially serving dinner to Dennis Day. For dessert, he insisted on pie a la mode. Imagine pie a la mode. Well, that's not too odd, Sherwood. Here in America, lots of people have ice cream on their pie. On chicken pot pie? <laughs> oh, uh, strangely enough, that was all he ate. Well, he probably wasn't hungry after eating the Queen of Spades. <laughs> I beg your pardon, sir? Oh, it's nothing, nothing Sherwood. <laughs> um, uh, what else happened at the party? Well, as the evening wore on, they played charades and 20 questions. And then about midnight, they all formed a circle around Phil Harris. Oh, what sort of game was that? Uh, no game. Uh, they were just trying to determine whether or not he was dead. <laughs> Will you be needing me any further, sir? Uh, no, thank you, Sherwood. You may go. Uh, thank you. Now, what, what are you doing, Benita? I'm just looking at the theatrical section. They got some good pictures showing. Would you like to go? Oh, no, 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 dear. I, I don't feel like going out, no. Okay. Hmm. One of the neighborhoods here is showing a revival of one of your pictures. Where, 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 where? <laughs> on the corner has a double feature. All right, then let's go. Well, good. And, Ronnie, since we're departing Jack's house, let's return his song to him. Oh, yes, yes. I'll get the car out. But, no, let's walk to the theater. The fresh air will do us good. Yes, and it won't hurt his song any either. Come on. <laughs> Jack. 
Jack. We only wanted to return your song. We found it in our morning paper. My song? So that's where it was. Thank you ever so much, Benita. I'm so glad to get it back. Why? <laughs> what? Get it, Ronnie, Ronnie. Oh, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah, yes, I imagine you would be glad to get it back. Well, I, I sure am. Well, Jack, we have to be running along. No, 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 Ronnie, now, now, don't go yet. But, Jack, we were on our way to see it. I uh, won't take no for an answer. Now, you must come in and visit. After all, I haven't seen you for so long. So long. <laughs> saying goodbye. <laughs> I hope they didn't think I was trying to get rid of them. Well, anyway, I got my song back. When you say I beg your pardon, uh, then I'll uh, come back to you. Uh, when you ask me to... Ladies and gentlemen... Each year, fires attack more than a quarter of a million homes, handicap our defense efforts, and cause much loss of life. Most of these fires start because someone was careless. Don't let it be you. Put out all matches and cigarettes before discarding them. Don't smoke in bed. Make sure all electrical wiring is properly installed. Follow all fire regulations. Be careful. Be cautious. Remember... Only you can prevent forest fires. Thank you.